Mick! <laughs> We've got three great new reasons to love analog delay. <laughs> well, I just love to know more, Dan. Hey everyone, and welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here. Hello, we're back. We are back indeed. Uh, so massive thank you for joining us today. Um, some housekeeping before we get going. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And also a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch like t-shirts and strings and pedals and hats and all the rest of us. Uh, it really helps us keep going. So yes, thank you so much. It's kind of how we fund the show. So please go there and buy stuff. Some of the teas have stuff on the back. Indeed, they do. There you go. Awesome. Right. So today's show, we're looking at some really clever new analog delays. Yeah. So um, obviously, analog delay is nothing new. In fact, it's really old. Indeed. <laughs> the question is probably why. Why would you want to use an analog delay? when that technology has been so fundamentally surpassed mm. by everything that's available in the digital realm. If you look at it um, in history, the first echo was big spaces. Yep. Canyons and such, which you could also say was reverb. Indeed. Yeah. And echo chambers that were made in studios. Mm -hmm. So a small room where you slap the sound off a wall and record the- <laughs> We're gonna say where you slap the sound engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you recorded the resultant sound. Um, then what? We get to tape. Yeah. Tape and drum. drums. All those mechanical echoes. And then at some point, analog delay comes along. And analog delay, Daniel, or analog echo is? So we're repeating the sound. We're recording our sound in, and then we're taking that sound, and we're repeating that and layering that over on the original sound. Yeah. Now, the idea with these... Uh, analog delays, they use what they, we call bucket brigade chips. It's a capacitive chip. It takes the uh, the sound and it passes down basically this massive row of capacitors like you're passing buckets of water. So they call them bucket brigade devices. And it's a nice analogy, isn't it? Because what happens when you pass one bucket of water to the next bucket? A bit of slosh comes out. Bit yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> and you get a bit of loss. So the longer uh, that time is, the more is you know you lose, basically. Uh, but it was the technology um, at the time because those uh, these delay chips also gave us things like chorus and flanging and yep. you know all that stuff. So, as always in the electric guitar world, or indeed, you know, if they're not being used for electric guitars, but in our context, as always in electric guitar world, it's the idiosyncrasies, it's the thing malfunctioning, the thing not working absolutely to its optimum that gives it this great sound that, we, that we've that we come to love. So that happens, analog delay is the thing, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden... Digital. Yeah, and all of those things we just said were so great, the idiosyncrasies, the foibles of this, you know, analog technology are suddenly ironed out by digital delay. Mm -hmm. Until the point where digital delay can recreate them all. Indeed. So <laughs> it, it was so interesting when the digital delay came out, everyone was like, the digital delay can be much longer. Yeah. 
long, long, and very so, so much cleaner than these analog delays. And for a, a little while there, when analog delays fell out of favor, you could pick them up for next to nothing. Mm. But it wasn't too long before people started saying, actually, my old uh, BD2 uh, or... 89. 89. You know, actually, there's something about that that I'm missing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is kind of where we are today. So we haven't rewound to making a delay in a large cavern or room. We're Indeed. not going to do that. We're rewinding as far as the Electro Harmonics Deluxe Memory Man, which is important to today's discussion. Why, Dan? Well, the clockwork has come out uh, from Jay Rocket that actually designed by Howard Davis. And Howard Davis is the designer of the original Memory Man from Electro Harmonics. Um, you know, fascinating guy. He's he, he's still, I, mean, I think he's basically freelance. He works with loads of different people. Yeah. Um, but what he doesn't know about analog delay is seriously not worth knowing. There we go. So, and it's fair to say that the Deluxe Memory Man is your favorite analog delay of all time ever. Of all time ever. We Absolutely. had the discussion beforehand, should we use a more modern version of it? Should we use something else? And we came to the conclusion that actually, you know what, we've tried everything alongside it and it's still the original. It's still the one he loves the most. Yep. Therefore, it's the one we should use. Yep. And the story of the uh, incredible graphics on the top, Dan. So it was uh, loaned to Neil Finn for a tour, and I asked him, where's the horn? <laughs> Indeed, oh, there it is. Neil Finn of Crowded House. Neil Finn of Crowded House. <laughs> and I asked him to sign it, um, and it was the tour that he did uh, with Liam and the whole family, and uh, Sharon and Ar uh, Aroy, and they all jumped in and signed it, and Neil drew a little guitar on there for me, and yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's one of my most prized possessions, I love it. And then we'll fast forward all the way to the Strymon timeline, which ironically enough is now an old delay. I mean, it's over 10 years old. It's amazing. But, you know, there are things that probably surpass it in terms of technology now, but it is the sort of middle of the road, do it all, digital delay, yeah. right? I think Robin Ford's just discovered it. It's now <laughs> on his board. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, um, our good friend Andy Timmons. Indeed. <laughs> Actually, I should honk Robin Ford as well, met him yeah. a few times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, I've met Robin, so yes. Okay, great. <laughs> um, Andy Timmons uses the timeline to simulate his two memory men. His two memory men. Yeah. So there, there's a link there. And then, of course, in the middle um, is the Ibanez, Ibanez uh, AD 80 analog delay, which yep. predates the AD 9. Indeed. So that's one of the sort of key cornerstones in analog delay history. Mm -hmm. And then the three that we're really talking about today, which from simplest to less simple is the uh, Mythos Oracle, which is just a really simple analog delay. We'll talk about it more in a sec. The J-Rocket Clockwork, which is designed to do some of the things that the Deluxe Memory Man does, designed by the same dude, and, you know, surprise, surprise, doesn't look a million miles different. Mm -hmm. And the Sir Discovery analog delay, yeah. which we have looked at briefly once already, but that is really probably Really probably. It's really probably the, the m most feature-laden analog delay anyone has seen to date. Yeah, sure. There are uh, the things like uh, the Chase Bliss. Uh, you know, the, it, It's not a new idea having an analog delay that you can control with you know, MIDI and that sort of stuff. But I think what the Sir guys have done um, Kevin Sir, uh, John Sir's son, who designed this. Can't honk either of those. No, but it's fair. I think what they've done is is managed to uh, produce a delay that's pretty much WYSIWYG. You know, as in all the knobs are on the top. You can, you know, manipulate everything that you need. It's all there, but then presets and MIDI and all this stuff. So we, we're going to touch on that. Um, but I guess the first question is, what do these things sound like? Yep. I think we should start with the Deluxe Memory Man, shouldn't we? You're indeed. Made famous by? Uh, if we go back to really early U2 recordings, um, you know, a lot of those classic sounds created with the Memory Man. Dust, dust two of Edge. The Edge, the yeah. Edge. Um, uh, our dear friend Ed O'Brien. Yep. It's a staple on his rig. Um, you know, guys like, 
Um, Andy Summers. Andy, yeah, Andy Summers. Uh, you know, Andy used a lot of EP3s and stuff, but it's definitely use it. Um, you know, Chris Cornell was a big fan of it. Oh, was you know, he? yeah. Can't um, him, sadly. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it is an absolute classic. Yeah. And to me, still, the one that everything is measured by. You know, and there's been loads of different versions, but this is still my favorite, the 24 volt version. Um, yeah, it just has a sound. So it uses the famous old MN whatever chips they were. Yeah, MN, uh, MN two, three double O fives. I mean, yes. There's lots Those of them. old Panasonic chips. Um, has maximum of what? 300 and some milliseconds delay? Well, I, this one's got a maximum of 600 milliseconds, okay. but I've never heard one that goes to anywhere near 600 milliseconds. Right. Um, um, but you can, if it's set up properly, if I sent this to Howard Davis, yeah. he could set it up so it would get me or like 550 yeah. milliseconds. But yeah, I've never heard one that's come out of the shop. It does 600, it okay. And then of course the modulation. Let's hear it. Dan. Okay, Let's hear all right. It. So the amplifiers we're using today, we've got the Victory VC35, the Copper, and we have the Tone King Imperial Mark II. <laughs> Andy Timmons, also a big user of the, of the Memory Man, he uses two, two. and we, you know, records with them. And he calls it the halo effect of the yeah, Memory right. Man. And it just, honestly, it just, it just adds something that's magical. Now, if I mess with any of the controls here, is it going to break down? Uh, no, just don't touch the level in control. Okay. That's set. That's this one, yeah? That's that one. Yeah. Okay. What, one of the things about these cronky old things is they quickly stop working properly. So whenever Dan brings out anything old and EHX, with due respect to EHX, it usually makes all kinds of no noises the minute I touch any of the controls. I will endeavour to do that with fair warning about the input control. Very good. Very so what good. we'll hear is we'll hear the extent of the delay, uh, time, I'll turn up the modulation, and maybe we'll get into a bit of oscillation and see what happens. Indeed. You can see why Andy calls it the halo effect. Because your favorite place to set it is right on that. Just on that edge. Point of self oscillation. So if I dig in a little bit, then the notes 
that receive a bit more level, yeah. sort of carry on a little bit more. It is, so one thing that's amazing about the Memory Man in particular is the front of the note. Yeah. So a lot of the uh, old analog delays are quite dark and they're, they, they can miss that front edge of the note. And that can be a really cool effect. Yeah. Um, the 8080 in particular, uh, you know, very dark you know, and, and can has the ability to do that. But there's something about the Memory Man and the clarity of it. And I, you know, it's, it just grabs that front edge. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. I'm just, I'm such a massive fan. It's such a great sound. And it does introduce the idea of delay as instrument, musical instrument, yeah. rather than simply repeat or effect. Mm -hmm. Because as you see there, you know, you just mess around with the controls and you're playing it like an instrument. And yeah. I think in its best uses down the years, that's what it's been used for. Absolutely. So, you know, why use these old analog devices? Well, one reason is because they are instruments in their own right and it's one reason why you love that thing so much. Totally. So we're not setting the clockwork up for much of a fall here, are we? <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm so interested to hear this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's, okay. let's jump well, in. Play something similar. Yep. Um, I'll see if I can manipulate the controls in a similar way. Now, um, cool things about the clockwork. Number one, it does do true stereo. We're not gonna hear the stereo today, but it does do true stereo, which of course is something that the old Deluxe Memory Man didn't do. Didn't do? Well, it doesn't, well, you've got a direct out and an echo out, so you can do wet split, dry. You can do wet dry with yeah. it. Um, I think the, the clockwork is true stereo, yeah. so. Um, tap tempo, of course. Yes. One of the big things with these uh, new analog delays is the ability to add a tap tempo. Yeah, I, I didn't write down the longest delay time, but we'll find out what that is. Um, of course, Howard Davis designed it. We know all about that. They specify classic bucket brigade chips. They yep. don't say which, right? Which we'll get onto in the other in the other um, things. And it's got an additional foot switch that you can turn the modulation on and off. Very cool. Which is pretty cool. Very right. cool. Uh, hopefully I can read the top controls. Uh, Gan Yi Dan.
Very interesting. Um, really cool. One other feature we didn't mention, the knob on the far right as you look at from the top is a boost. Yeah. So independent of the delay circuit, mm -hmm. it, we turn the mix all the way down so that it was dry and it's just a boost. Yeah. Which it's is really handy, actually. I assume that's what Howard would have liked the input control to be on the original. Right. Because th it can get a bit nasty. Yeah. To the point where even sometimes just to get it to unity, you you know, you're breaking up. It actually is part of its charm. Yeah, so it, it, it creates some overdrive. Absolutely. Out of interest, when you push the boost, does it make the over, does it make the delay more overdriven? I, I don't we believe just, so. Can we, we have a go. Can we just check that? So interestingly, did you hear how when you turned the gain up and we were missing the front of the note? It's yeah, is it a compander or something? Uh, I, I don't know if that's got a compander circuit in it, but it's doing something where it's, it's too much signal. Yeah, it's so too much. It's, it's just too much. So, so it's missing the, the front end of it. But if you do the same thing with the memory man, maybe, you know, but I'll, I'll just hit the, like into the memory man. Yeah. So turn the clock work off. I'll risk turning this a bit. So the clock works cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, let's just have a listen to that modulation though in a sec.
We're allowed today. I'm allowed today. <laughs> but gee, it sounds great. It's killer, isn't it? So um, if you weren't following there, when you turn the delay time all the way down to the minimum and you uh, add a bit of modulation, you just get that flangey. Yeah. Flangey texture, which can turn into a chorus as you increase the delay time a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then obviously when you play the chords with the modulation is where you get the chorus in the repeats. Yeah. It's such an evocative sound, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's really wonderful. I mean, you know, going back to things we talk about a lot, like, you know, the delay thing being the basis of chorus and flanger, you get those delay times down far enough. Yeah. Um, and you know you can start to get some of those sounds. Very yeah. very cool. I mean, it's super clean sounding. Super clean sounding. Um, and that's the so you can hear the Memory Man sort of caving in. Yeah. But that is part of its charm. Yeah. You know we've talked a lot about the importance of preamps with delays. Yeah. And you know that preamp in the Memory Man is a, such a massive part of that sound. Let me before we just move on. Just try some overdrive a minute and flick between the clockwork yeah, yeah. And, the, and the memory man and just see how that, when we're saying it sounds clean, it just sounds, um, one of the surprises on the clockwork is there's no tone control for the repeats. Right. Um, perhaps less required on an analog delay, although as we see, the Sir has it. Yeah. Um, you'd expect it on like a digital delay or a, indeed a modeling recreation of a classic character delay because you want to roll some of that tone off the repeats. Mm -hmm. So maybe it, it, it makes logical sense that it's not there on an analog delay. But when it sounds as clean as that, to get it to sit back out the way. You, uh, you did the option to roll a bit of that top off. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Let's have, let's, let's see. Um, there you go. Yeah. New gladio. Okay, yeah, let's try the, was, this is the Gladio SC, which we haven't actually tried yet on the show. So in that scenario, I actually think the clockwork works better. Yeah, that's because it's kind of why I suggested it. Yeah, because it holds on yeah. to more of the of of the note. The memory man is colouring that too much. Yeah, and if you want to, um, obviously, if you want to knock it back even further, just turn the mix control back. Uh, the furthest knob on the left there on the clockwork is mix from all the way wet on the right. I would assume to all the way dry mix on the on left. The right. <laughs> just does it go one hundred percent wet out of interest? <laughs> Yeah. 
Ooh. It's the weirdest thing, right? Trying to do that. Which is really handy. So if you do want to use it 100% wet, which might be applicable in certain rigs, um, you've got the option to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I really like it. I think adding the tap tempo, um, the modulation switchable on and off yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Because, for example, you know, if you did have that sort of short delay time set and you wanted that kind of flangey sort of sound, It's really killer. Really killer. It's really killer. All right. Um, okay, so I, let's take a quick step back. Um, you know, the clockwork, obviously, the Howard Davis thing, the Merry Man, really impressive. You can see where the, you know, the Merry Man has its thing, but the clockwork, to me, is more flexible, will work with a larger variety of gain stages and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, awesome, really impressive. If what you like is darker tones, and a lot of people really do, like the, is, what's the what's the the old boss? It's not the the DM two. The DM two. I said DB two before. No, this DM two. Yeah. Those sorts of delays. Um, the. Ibanez, the AD80, after that came the AD9, which is brighter, but the ADA is the AD80 is certainly darker. So if you just we have a quick listen to this one, if you just have Shrongage with this. So we're eschewing all your modulation and this is straight yeah. echo, straight delay, no yeah. modulation at all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be in a punk band. But there's a lot of those uh, like tighter, shorter delay times on these old analog delays that you can just get some wonderful, you know, almost flangey type things out of, right? Yeah. So, you know, when you hear the longer delays, you can start hearing how dark that gets and, you know, because the, the, the you know, we, we're using that bucket brigade thing and we, we're, you know, the longer we go on, the less uh, clarity we have at the end, right? But so a lot of people love these delays. But one thing they they don't have is tap tempo. So uh, our friend Zach from Mythos has designed this, inspired by these early Japanese delays, to uh, you know have that sort of vibe to it, but with the tap tempo control. Yeah, so no bells and whistles in terms of tone controls, nope. modulation, or anything like that. Just a really great analog delay. For the detail obsessives among you out there, I did write this down. Oh, well done. Uh, Zach is using 2MN3205, 3205s, right. yep. um, BBDs. Uh, it has up to 600 milliseconds. That's impressive. But will go longer if you use the tap tempo. 
So off the knob, you get 600. Right. If you use a tap tempo, you can get a bit longer. Interesting. And it will degrade as we're about to hear. So let's, why don't we just set the AD80 up to be like a medium or as long as delay as it will go, couple of repeats. And let's just hear the character of that repeat. Okay. Now you hear, this is so cool. I, I love this about these delays. You hear the bottom end disappear, yeah. right? It's not just the top end, but the bottom end goes as well. Well, let's hear some more repeats then and we can really hear that. It's almost like a wah, yeah. you know, that filtering thing. It's fantastic. Yeah, because it's filtering top and bottom end. Absolutely, it? which is why when you get to the digital emulations or the, you know, any digital delay, the ability to be able to filter the top and the bottom end of repeats for me is everything. Which is what we'll get to with the Sir eventually. So let's hear the, hear the Oracle then and where it sits in relation to that. Thank you. 
Right. Here's the thing. If, I've, I haven't played guitar in about two weeks. Right. True, truthfully, because we haven't filmed in two weeks. And I haven't really felt like playing the guitar. I know when it's working. Right. When I just don't want to stop playing. Sure. I just don't want to stop playing. There's a couple of delay pedals that do that for me. One is the Analog Man ARDX20, which yep. is for me the holy grail of all analog delay pedals. Right. But for the fact it doesn't have modulation, modulation, it's doing everything yeah. I get out of the ARDX20. Wow. That is crazy cool. And you hear, um, when we set the delay time really long and I played that sort of rhythmic bit, yep. and it was just this wash underneath, it wasn't getting in the way, no. it wasn't poking anything, it was yeah. just like, that is really, really good. And I can't believe it's been sat in a box for a mm. month and we haven't opened it. Oh, I've been away. Give us a break. But, so you touched on something there that's a really big deal with analog delays, is that you can have the effect quite high, but it doesn't tend to get in the way of things. A lot of that, because when we're talking about the, the nature of the repeats and the way that they filter, uh, they tend to leave the direct signal alone, which is why I think you know we all like them. I think that's even warmer than the than the AD80, but it gives you that lovely big sort of bed to play over. It's really, so really cool. cool. Yeah, it's so crazy cool. Um, I don't think there's much in the way of additional features or anything. Um, you, there's there's an external tap tempo. Okay. So um, if you want to tap, yeah, using something else, yeah, which might seem surplus to requirements, but actually it does make sense on pedals. The, often the first thing to break is the foot switch. So if you're always hammering on that temp tap tempo switch all night, it can be useful to have something external that's much cheaper that you can afford to replace every time it breaks. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you want to hear what it'd sound like with modulation? Uh, how do we do that then? Just play. Let's okay. Play. <laughs> Pretty funny. Sorry, I temporarily forgot what key I was in, um, which is pretty hard when you're in A. Um, well, okay, so what the Analog Man ARDX20 does is it uses control voltages to do what Dan has just done. Exactly. Which is gently manipulate the delay time, which is what gives you the modulation. That's really cool. There you go. Zach, get on it, mate. That's awesome. <laughs> How cool. Yeah. Um, do you want to play that? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. You've heard it. Yeah, heard it. It's a winner, isn't it? It's wonderful. Really wonderful. I do have to ask what that Mustang thing is. The, oh, right. So, yeah, the Mustang. Um, uh, it is a basically a Neve preamp in a pedal. Sounds banging. It's unreal. Sounds banging. The, and shout out to the Gladio SC as well. We haven't used the Gladio SC yet. Yes. That sounds pretty cool too. So. Yep. And the, the Comet from our mates at Hampstead. Uh, yeah. Fabulous. This is the new one. You can change where the EQ sits before or after the gain. Um, nice bass and treble. Sounds killer. Some good stuff. These amps are working nice They're today as well. Really I don't know whether really it's just because we haven't filmed in ages, but it does sound really good in here today. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Let's hope it comes through on the recording. All right then. Um, so, sir, no, every, no. everything you've just seen. Yep. And then some. And then some. So quick overview of the features. I did write some of them down. Right. Sir Discovery Delay, first um, delay pedal they've done, designed by Kevin Sir, who's mm -hmm. John's son. Mm -hmm. um, all analog signal path. All analog. So the only digi stuff in it is to is for control. Yep. For MN3005 reissued uh, Bucket Brigade chips. Yep. Which are the same, basically the same chips that are in the Memory Man. Right. Yeah. But they're, so, they're the reissue ones. Yep. 
Um, 127 presets. Amazing. Because that's, you know, good. So do, before we go on, so that's, that is a massive deal, right? The fact that you can take the analog settings and once you've got them, store them and recall them. Yeah. Right? Whether you do it by the foot switches on the Discovery or you do it via MIDI, we'll have a look at that in a second. But that's a, that's a really big deal. Um, you know, things like the uh, the Chase Bliss, the, the red knob uh, delay they've got, it, you know, does that as well. But it's... Uh, tonal recall. The tonal recall, there yeah. it is. It, now, it was a... We, we did say, look, should we put all this stuff on the board today? We're never... We're struggling enough to get through the stuff we have got on the board, so yep. to add every other delay pedal in the world on there would be, would be pretty tough. Yeah, but, yeah. But, uh, it, you know... That it's just to say that having an amazing analog delay that you can then store presets with, I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's really cool, not yep. least because it's not just about uh, you, your standard controls that you see on the Oracle there, you know, delay time, feedback, and level. It's not just that. It's in the Sir, so you've also got um, a filter, high yep. and low pass yep. filter yep. to do what we were talking about earlier. You've also got um, variable shape modulation. So you can change the modulation waveform shape in three ways. Amazing. Which is really cool. Um, expression pedal control for anything. Yep. So if you want to control anything via expression pedal, you can do that. Yep. What we were using it for with the clockwork was the delay time, I believe. Yes. Um, tap tempo, obviously. Yep. Which sounds pretty obvious at this point. Um, subdivisions. Yes. There on the top panel. Uh, true bypass or buffered bypass. And I think I've covered most of it. It does off the knob. It does 40 milliseconds to 1100 milliseconds. Which is massive. Yeah, and I'm like, 40 milliseconds, that's not short enough. Lo and behold, if you then use the down buttons. increment up and down buttons, you can go to 17 milliseconds yep. up to over 2000, apparently. Amazing. Two seconds. So uh, it's got a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. OK, well, let's hear it. I think you should play, mate. I've done I've done enough playing for the You're last few moments. Playing beautifully. First thing we touched on was the MIDI, right? So if you go, uh, I'm sending MIDI out of G3 into the Sur. So there it's just changing level and delay time and that sort of stuff. So no matter what MIDI controller you use, you can set up presets and you can have your MIDI device change the, the presets in the Discovery. The cool thing is it's got in, out, and through as well. Amazing. So yep. some things don't have all of that, do they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, just quickly, you'll touch on this before we pull the expression pedal out, um, you can morph between presets. Oh, so wow. So I can, with the expression pedal, I can, if I go down here, I've got this sound. But now as I push the expression pedal forward, So in addition to using the expression pedal in its sort of traditional form of just mm -hmm. changing one parameter, you can actually morph anything between all the knobs on there. Yeah. You so can what do I'm doing, I'm doing feedback, I'm doing filter, I'm doing different modulation. Yeah. It's fantastic. That is really cool. Really cool. So for the, the, the MIDI ables of you out there, um, there aren't many analog delays that are MIDI capable. Uh, Dan is going to remove the MIDI MIDI ball now so we can tweak the knobs. Indeed. I think you can do it, you know, obviously when you're programming things you can tweak the knobs, but we're just going to get rid of all that stuff just yeah. to make it really simple. Yeah, so uh, I'll see if I can understand it then. Okay. Gany.
That is really serious. That Fil is really serious. The, the filtering on the repeats is absolutely killer because you can just get it to that point where, remember we were talking earlier about the 8080 and you can roll off a bit of high and a bit of bottom to yep. get that really mid-focus thing as it goes off. That's really, really brilliant because not everyone likes the same thing with yeah. filtering. Yeah, yeah. And then secondly, that modulation is so powerful. Let me, I just want to hear the um, different wave yes, shapes. Sure. Yep. If you give me a, just give me a eight, I'll... I really love it. It's really serious. It has big and fat. All the all the tricks. I love the expression pedal thing. It's really cool. Um, but just straight out sonically, I think it's really beautiful. They have done a great job. They it really is have. loads of money, and they are quite hard to come by. Yeah. Um, I think it's over five hundred dollars. 
in the US. It is, yeah. Which is a lot of money. Yeah, and over 500 quid in the UK. Yeah, that's even and more if, money. Even more money if you can get them. Yeah, the, the clockwork is not by any stretch of the imagination ultra affordable, mm. but it is more affordable. <laughs> yeah. Um, so interestingly, I think, you, you know, the timeline is cheaper than the, the discovery. Well, let's, right? okay, we, we really should hear the timeline then, shouldn't we, after all of that? You know how to work it, don't you? I do. Every time I try and work it, I start throwing things. So I'll bring up the analog yeah. uh, thing. Analog BBD, the is BBD it, or something like that? thing, and then if you grab your schwangage Guitar of, of choice. choice. Um, let's play the old Strata Blaster. I haven't played that for a minute. In fact, not that one. In the um, idiotic decision to go for non-RWRP pickups, which does make it sound very nice, it buzzes like a sod. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll play Transit Van and see how we get on. Okay. So I'll go from here, whatever we're doing here. I'm not going to try and match it, but so we can still yeah. get that is. Uh, so let's go back on to... <laughs> The analog one sounded better. Yep. Timeline is really great. It's really flexible. Its own thing. The timeline. Yeah. It it's totally definitely is. got a sound. So totally I, does. I, totally it's quite does. Loud. <laughs> it totally does. Um, you know, what the timeline will give you is that and 
Everything a dozen out, you know, a dozen yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the discovery, that's that's the sound of the analog stuff yeah. doing its business. Indeed, it is. And if you really love that, awesome. So I think the final thing we should do is um, deluxe memory man and discovery. I'll have a twiddle. Okay. Let's yeah. see where we get. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Um, in the interests of, well, not even nearly completeness, but. Um, To bring us back to the beginning, I guess. Sure. I think you could you could fiddle all day because obviously the uh, deluxe memory man has a has a, a sound to the repeats but it's still retains more high end than I realized it does brighter yeah totally and yeah, so yeah. it's I think you know I really like my bright guitar sounds yeah. maybe that's why I'm so drawn to the memory man mm. it doesn't have that mid range uh, almost cocked wah thing as the as it goes off as it yeah. goes off yeah, yeah. which is a really really cool sound but I think that is the key to that halo thing because yeah. it's not doing that. Yeah. It's just sounding big, fat, and lush. Um, yeah. However, but that was it. I mean, that was the maximum delay time. Yeah, that's it. I know. I so know. you can't, even if you wanted to do more, you can't. Whereas, well, with everything else we've got, you can go considerably more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blimey. Have we answered all the questions, Dan? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. The, the the sort of slightly annoying conclusion, as always, is the expensive thing is really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But to be fair, no duffers. No, they all sound wonderful. Very, very playable, very, very interactive controls. And I guess that comes back to the top, what we said, uh, you know, where your analog delay really is an instrument. Totally. You play it as much as you play the guitar and the, uh, and the amp. And it's going to add its own character, mm. you know, and I think it's why so many of us are, are drawn to it. Yeah. You know, the, you know, I've used the, the, the timeline for years. It's wonderful. But whenever I put the memory man on, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, there it it's is. still the daddy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I think the addition of the filter controls on the Sir is... Magic. One of the reasons I think both of us are drawn, you know, in a, in a slightly different world, but um, mine and Dan's favourite delay kind of to just use for pretty much everything is the Free the Tone... Future Factory. Future Factory, yeah. yeah. And it, also the Flight Time, which is the kind of mono single delay version of it, um, or single delay line version of it. And one of the key things that both of those have is... Those filters really serious filters yeah. on, on high and low end. 
um, to be able to to just bend those repeats how you want them, mm. and uh, significantly variable modulation too. Yeah. So if you're just given a character of a repeat and you're given a modulation, if it's not what you like, you can't change it. Exactly. And again, what you know, in the analog world where you, you know, sometimes you just get three buttons. Yeah. Three, you know, if you love the character of it, you're away. Yeah. But yeah, that is limited in that sense. I, I do. I'm not just saying this, but I do think that Oracle delay is likely to be my go-to. Nice. Simple analog delay. Am I going to have to from here sit on there in. at all the gigs doing that for you? Yeah. You know? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, there we go. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Uh, you know, please subscribe again if you haven't subscribed. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our dear friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And if you click on the links below, you will find uh, links through to Sweetwater in the States. Mm -hmm where if you buy stuff, Dan and I get kicked back off that, and it helps us greatly in funding making this show. Indeed. And a uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Have a fantastic day. Join us on Monday, uh, 5 p.m. GMT or GMT. BST. BST. All right, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, UK time. <laughs> well, it's, B it's BST between the 31st of March and the 31st of October, and it's GMT outside of those dates. GNT. Now there's a good idea. There's a good idea. <laughs> Brilliant. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. All right. See you. Bye. Then.